This video was entered into the Summer of Math Exposition 1. Reality is seemingly infinite. There is no frame of reference you can choose to measure the universe from because it is seemingly infinite. To truly understand our understanding of infinity, we will need to go back in time. Five centuries before Common Era, Greek philosopher Zeno of Ilia devised paradoxes concerned with the time and the infinite. Highlighting one of these, the dichotomy paradox states that which is in locomotion must arrive at the halfway stage before it arrives at its goal. But before they can get halfway there, they must get a quarter of the way there. And before traveling a quarter of the way, they must travel one eighth, and before an eighth, a sixteenth, and so on. If you put numbers to this problem, you produce one of the first infinite sequences in mathematics. Four centuries before the Common Era, Aristotle states he's a strong finitist. In his universe, everything is finite. The cosmos is finite, bodies are finite, geometrical segments are finite, each number is finite, etc. However, he says there are processes that can be iterated indefinitely, giving rise to what he called potential infinity. I cannot stress enough the role that Aristotle played in the history of infinity. His opinions and framework for thinking influenced discussions thousands of years into the future. For good reason, too. It would be hard to argue with this perspective. Look around you, things are tactile and have definite starts and ends. One century before the Common Era, the ancient Indian religion of Jainism was the first to discard the idea that all infinities were the same or equal. They recognized different types of infinities, infinite in length, infinite in area, infinite in volume, and infinite perpetually. Then they classified all numbers into three sets, numerable, innumerable, and infinite. The origin of this Jain mathematical system stems from two sutras. One was concerned with planets, stars, and their orbits. The other was concerned with infinities. This fundamental idea that there could be different types of infinities wasn't revisited for over 2,000 years in the late 19th century by George Cantor. We can bridge Cantor's work and the Jains using a left null. What the Jains called the highest enumerable number, Cantor called this a left null, the cardinal number of the infinite set of integers 1, 2, 3, etc. Cantor is responsible for set theory, where he introduces the idea of cardinals and ordinals. Ordinals describe the order of things, first, second, third, etc. Omega is the smallest infinite ordinal. It comes after all the natural numbers, so after that, etc. We will soon use set theory as a guide through infinite spatial dimensions. But before we do that, we will need to take a detour onto one of the most controversial topics in mathematics. Despite zero representing nothing, zero has an extremely rich history, originating from the Babylonians who had a symbol to represent an empty column, but never defined a number zero, to the Greeks who rejected the idea of zero being a number, to the Mayans who independently devised zero and would curiously equate it to infinity, to India where the modern idea of zero was formed to later be adopted in Arabic mathematics. Now zero has a cousin, the infinitesimal, a quantity that does not exist in the standard real number system, but in other non-standard number systems. By definition, an infinitesimal number is a quantity that is closer to zero than any other standard real number, but that is not zero. So there is no perspective you can view an infinitesimal from where you will see the one at the end of the zeros. However, there are different kinds of infinitesimals. For example, these both represent infinitesimals, but one of them is growing at a faster rate than the other per iteration. So I feel it is important to distinguish between different types of zero as they have different growth speeds and properties, similar to the way we have different kinds of infinities. One can use the ideas surrounding infinitesimals as a conceptual framework for thinking about all quantities that approach some value. For example, take the long debated topic of 0.9 recurring equals 1. Many students believe that these two quantities are different despite the ridiculous number of proofs saying otherwise. If we change our perspective by subtracting 1 from both sides, we can see that this is another case of an infinitesimal equaling 0. We can also see another case of this problem appear when speaking about probabilities. Some believe it is impossible to be absolutely certain because it would require infinite evidence. Others believe it is impossible to have probability 100% or 0% of anything. Only probabilities that approach those values. To further our understanding around this topic, let's take a look at what Grant, owner of the channel 3Blue1Brown, has to say about the probability of hitting an infinitesimally small bullseye on a dartboard. 
If you choose a random number from the number line, it's possible that it's rational, but its probability is zero. And this, a lot of people kind of try to come to philosophical terms with, like, how can it be possible but probability is zero? The probability would have to be slightly bigger. But it's uh, just one of those things of math. And what does Sean Carroll have to say about an infinitesimally small probability? There's some cognitive bias. Uh, I don't know what it's called, but there's a cognitive bias that says the only probabilities for anything are 0%, 50%, or 100%. <laughs> and when I tell you something can happen, but the probability is really, 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 really low, people are like, but it can happen, right? <laughs> like, well, let me focus on that, comp on that possibility that it happens. And I'm like, no, don't do that. It's just not sufficiently probable that it's worth worrying about in any way. The cognitive bias he is talking about comes from prospect theory. Best explained in this clip by Dr. Daniel Kim. People tend to categorize probabilities into three crude buckets. Those buckets are never going to happen, maybe, so basically a 50-50 coin flip, and for sure, right? So if something has a 1% chance of happening, people often will simply simplify that and say, never going to happen. Or you could have people who round up and say that 1% chance is going to happen like 50-50. So it turns out that people are pretty bad at assessing probabilities. Lastly, by not following the rigorous mathematical proofs behind 0.9 recurring equal 1, we are entering the field of non-standard analysis, a field often pioneered by intuitionists. I left some great resources on this subject in the description. In order to provide you with the same intuition that I have about spatial dimensions and infinity, I need to take the most removed perspective. And in doing that, we're sort of leaving our intuition about 3D physical space. So first, we have a point. This point is the zeroth dimension. In theory, the zeroth dimension doesn't have any size, doesn't have any direction, doesn't have any starting location. And the reason it doesn't have any of those things is because there only exists the zeroth dimension. There is no 3D space for it to grow into, there is no 3D space for it to exist within. It is just it, the zeroth dimension. So rendering it as a sphere really isn't useful. It could be infinitely large or infinitely small. All that we really know is that there is some point, and that is our zeroth dimension. Now if you were to take an infinite number of zeroth dimensions and distribute them in a fair way, what you would end up with is a line. Now, in theory, this line doesn't have any thickness. It's made up of a zeroth dimension, so if you were to try to look at the thickness of this line, it, there really is none. It's, it's infinitely small. Or it could be rendered as infinitely large, too, because at, at the beginning, we determined that the zeroth dimension is an object that really has no size. And so, in theory, the line itself is a zeroth dimension. Because there is no distance between zeroth dimensional points, if there are an infinite number of them, then really you can sort of imagine like they're just sort of stacked on top of each other. So it's only when you go to render this line that you can say that it has any length. And so during the rendering step, if you choose to make that distance between the first two zeroth dimensional points anything other than exactly zero, then it will create a line. But if it is exactly zero, infinitely zero, then it won't create a line. Instead, you'll have an infinite number of zeroth dimensions stacked on top of each other in the same location as the original zeroth dimension. And so if you're a lot like me, you might be asking, what determines the direction of propagation of the zeroth dimensions? And so viewing this from the most removed perspective, it doesn't really matter which direction you choose to propagate these zeroth dimensions into because there is no 3D space for the line to exist within. So there is no concept of direction. Now, because of the way I've laid the scene out, we're sort of like a 3D omniscient perspective viewing the first dimensional line, but from the perspective of anything within the line, there really is no 3D space. At this point, the line itself is all that exists. And so the only thing that can exist within the line is other zeroth dimensional points or other smaller line segments. And so we can now take the line and do the same thing that we did with the zeroth dimension and repeat it infinitely. And what we do when we repeat that line infinitely is we create a plane. And so then we can take this plane, which is a two dimensional object made up of infinite number of first dimensional objects, which are made up of an infinite number of zeroth dimensional objects. And we can take those planes and we can stack them on top of each other infinitely to create 3D space. This line is here because our camera is between the planes that we stacked looking parallel to the face of the plane. 
So as the distance between the planes gets closer to zero, this line will disappear. Unfortunately, because our scene is 3D and not higher dimensional, this is as far as we can go in this perspective. And really, because you're watching this on a 2D screen, you shouldn't have been able to see past the second infinite spatial dimension, which would have taken up the entire screen, leaving it fully white, just like this. So for the 3D infinite case to work, I had to place the camera in a confusing spot and lower the opacity of the second dimensional planes. Recall that we are still viewing this from the third person omniscient perspective. For this 3D system to be standalone, our camera or viewport would have to be built using the components of the 3D system. If this was a true 3D infinite system capable of representing all combinations in 3D space, then you exist inside that system. Now if I put finite bounds on this infinite 3D space, we will be able to generalize this process to higher dimensions. We could take these 3D space and stack them on top of each other infinitely to create a fourth dimensional object and take those fourth dimensional objects and stack them on top of each other infinitely to create a fifth dimensional object. And you can do this ad infinitum until you're left with something that is infinitely infinite. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't be afraid to click the bell icon down below to be notified when I release another video, which will probably happen very soon because I enjoyed making this video so much that I've decided to start working on this channel full time now. And I'm excited to announce that we're migrating our sources to an Obsidian instance. This will let you view the web of connections that describe our videos. I still have to index over 500 videos and over 14 pages of URLs that I've gathered while making these videos. So it might take some time before you see the link to the Obsidian instance in the description. Again, thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.